Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Today we start the book of Mark. Hallelujah. And the Chapter 1, The Preaching of John the Baptist. Are you guys saved? Well, you need to be saved, really. We are living in the last days. Is it going to be the time that people are going to look for um, the Lord and the time is going to come that his outstretched arms are no longer going to be stretched out? You really need to give your life to Christ. Lay your life down. You receive Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior today if you haven't already. And you need to read God's word, preferably the King James Version of the Bible. What well, It doesn't matter. Get the Apocrypha. I don't care. Read the Bible. Read God's word. Get into the Bible. Get to know the Lord so you can hear his voice when he's speaking to you. And also you want the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you need to know the Lord. Have that personal relationship with him. Right? That's what he's seeking from his children. That's what he's looking for. And for you to be obedient. So, And we also need to live a daily life of repentance because... We live in these fleshly bodies, and the flesh is always warring with the Spirit. We have to cry out to Him until we hear from Him. And don't stop crying out till you hear from Him. He'll teach you the Word. He'll, he'll answer you. He knows your heart. Okay? Men looks by the appearance, but God goes by your heart. Okay? He sees your heart. I always tell you the truth because I love you, and Father God loves you more. I sure hope you all are saved. We're living in the very last days. Really, we are. We really are. And um, before we begin our reading, though, we're going to say a prayer for children of all ages. Right? Youngest to oldest alike, including all the ones in the womb. Right? Let us let us pray. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for giving us parents that love us and train us up by your word. Thank you, Father, for giving us siblings that we love. And thank you, Father, for loving us and teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. We love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen, indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The preaching of John the Baptist. And as we read, each chapter has numerous chapters in it. So you'll hear me read titles as I go along. It's okay. Just know I'm still in chapter one, but different subtitles, right? Okay. The preaching of John the Baptist, the book of Mark, chapter one. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began just as God had said in the book written by Isaiah the prophet. I am sending my messenger to get the ray ready for you. In the desert, someone is shouting, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him. So John the Baptist showed up in the desert and told everyone, Turn back to God and be baptized. Then your sins will be forgiven. From all Judea and Jerusalem, crowds of people went to John. They told how sorry they were for their sins, and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. He made a leather strap around his waist and ate grasshoppers and wild honey. John also told the people, someone more powerful is going to come. And I am not good enough even to stoop down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's talking about Jesus. Okay, the baptism of Jesus. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the sky open and the Holy Spirit coming down to him like a dove. A voice from heaven said, You are my own dear son, and I am pleased with you. Jesus and Satan. Right away, God's Spirit made Jesus go into the desert. He stayed there for 40 days while Satan tested him. Jesus was with the wild animals, but angels took care of him. Jesus began his work. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee and told the good news that comes from God. He said, the time has come. God's kingdom will soon be here. Turn back to God and believe the good news. Jesus chooses four fishermen. As Jesus was walking along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew. They were fishermen and were casting their nets into the lake. Jesus said to them, come with me. I will teach you how to bring in people 
instead of fish. Right then the two brothers dropped their nets and went with him. Jesus walked on and soon saw James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in a boat, mending their nets. At once Jesus asked them to come with him. They left their father in the boat with the hired workers and went with him. A man with an evil spirit. Jesus and his disciples went to the town of Capernaum. Then on the next Sabbath, he went into the Jewish meeting place and started teaching. Everyone was amazed at his teaching. He taught with authority and did and not like the teachers of the law of Moses. Suddenly a man with an evil spirit in him entered the meeting place and yelled, Jesus from Nazareth, what do you want with us? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy one. Jesus told the evil spirit, be quiet and come out of the man. The spirit shook him. Then it gave a loud shout and left. Everyone was completely surprised and kept saying to each other, what is this? It must be some new kind of powerful teaching. Even the evil spirits obey him. News about Jesus quickly spread all over Galilee. Jesus heals many people. As soon as Jesus left the meeting place with James and John, they went home with Simon and Andrew. When they got there, Jesus was told that Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with fever. Jesus went to her. He took hold of her hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she served them a meal. That evening after sunset, all who were sick or had demons in them were brought to Jesus. In fact, the whole town gathered around the door of the house. Jesus healed all kinds of terrible diseases and forced out a lot of demons. But the demons knew who he was, and he did not let them speak. Very early the next morning, Jesus got up and went to a place where he could be alone and pray. Simon and the others started looking for him, and when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, We must go to the nearby towns so that I can tell the good news to those people. This is why I have ne this is why I have come. Then Jesus went to Jewish meeting places everywhere in Galilee where he preached and forced out demons. Jesus heals a man. A man with leprosy came to Jesus and knelt down. He begged, "You have the power to make me well if only you wanted to." Jesus felt sorry for the man, so he so he put his hand on him and said, "I want to. Now you are well." At once the man's leprosy disappeared, and he was well. After Jesus strictly warned the man, he sent him on his way. He said, Don't tell anyone about this. Just go and show the priest that you are well. Then take a gift to the temple as Moses commanded, and everyone will know that you have been healed. The man talked about it so much and told so many people that Jesus could no longer go openly into a town. He had to stay away from the towns, but people still came to him from everywhere. God's willing tomorrow, we still come back in the book of Mark, chapter 2, Jesus heals a crippled man. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one or some. He died for us all. So you all are truly blessed. And God says, Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something that's up for debate or discussion. It's something we all must do, so please do it. And if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, please let it go. If you want your Father who art in heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions, you must forgive your fellow man. I love you all to love of the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike. And please be safe out there. God bless you. Bye-bye.